the end of day five of the Run to the Rockies 2017. It's a tough one. It's been a lot of rain in the area. Um, and I guess overnight in some of the areas here, they had three inches of rain. So anyway, we got to Gladstone. And there's a little store on the corner. And they have an above ground tank for gas. We got there. We needed gas. And uh, we got there at 4.50 p.m. They close at 5. So we just made it. And at that point, we asked them about the rest of the road, the other 140 miles of dirt road, um, going all the way up into uh, Trinidad. And they said, no way. But anyway, we made it. We're here now. We got to Trinidad Lake State Park, set up our tents. Day five in the books. Tomorrow's a day of rest in Trinidad. And then we'll move on through Colorado. Oscar Zerweck of San Antonio rode nearly 650 right. miles to Logan, New Mexico and met Stephen and I at Ute Lake State Park. Oscar was recovering from a heart attack in March, just six months earlier, and also chemotherapy and radiation treatment for cancer. Oscar rode with us through some very tough sand and mud in New Mexico for about eight hours the following day all the way up into Trinidad and at Trinidad he decided that he couldn't take the off-road riding portion it was exhausting him and so he turned around and drove from Trinidad back to San Antonio. This is cool. I don't think I remember this much flowers. First mud of the day. Not bad at all. Oh, what are those? Turkey. Turkeys? Turkeys? Oh, man. Wow. There you go. Look at that. Heading out of Trinidad northwest towards West Cliff, you experience some fantastic scenery. While this section of the ride climbs several thousand feet in elevation, you get a great opportunity to really enjoy the scenery as the roads are mostly smooth gravel without the technical sections you encounter in other areas that keep your eyes on the road and not on the surroundings. Buddy's from Trinidad. Ed from Pennsylvania. Retired Police Department. Yeah. Right? Philadelphia? Uh, west of Philly. Yeah. Yeah. And then we got Mike. The mic? Uh, Hello from Atlanta, Georgia. Alright. Or otherwise known as Hot Blanca. It's been a good day and we ran into them in Trinidad. Ryan with us for a little bit in the West Cliff. And uh, at least that is Mike's gonna shortcut, take a short. He's gonna take a short and <laughs> go hang out in a swimming pool. <laughs> you can play that. Yeah, gonna eat that. But anyway, <laughs> uh, you know, well. It's got a Honda, we've got BMWs, I don't know what that says, but I'll try and let you guys know about it. <laughs> Mike turned around and headed back to the highway, while Ed continued on with Stephen and I up to West Cliff. We had a smooth ride into the campground, and after a nice dinner, we were treated to some spectacular views of the sunset. The next day we headed out through Cotopaxi and on up into Salida where we stopped for lunch. The roads heading north from West Cliff up to Cotopaxi were in great shape. We weren't sure what we would encounter because we knew it had been a record year for rain in that part of the state. As it turned out, we were able to make some really good time as the roads were packed down just enough to keep the dust down and get us to Cotopaxi for lunch. Hey, what do you think about, uh, what do you think about West Coast? The town we were in last night? 
I thought it was a surprising town. Uh, the fact that we pulled in, it looked like a few houses, and all of a sudden there was a bunch of restaurants and uh, people there and everything else. It was a typical western town. I just didn't expect it to be there, so it was kind of neat. Beautiful morning, sunny, no rain. We had a great day yesterday. Today, we're, it's just beautiful. We're into beautiful rock formations and mountains and the river right over here. And uh, we're heading up close to Buena Vista and uh, we'll camp. So it'll be an early day today. That'll give us some time to relax and get ready for the remainder of the trip. And uh, it's fun, it's fun. Ed went his separate way after we ate as he and Mike were riding the Trans Am Trail well, east to west, ride, huh? while Stephen and I were heading north to Nathrop. Today, uh, or last night, we were camped in Nathrop, Colorado, just south of Buena Vista. Um, we're gonna leave this morning. And uh, today's the day we go up to Tin Cup Pass. We haven't decided what we're going to do because they've had record levels of rainfall this year. We're going to leave here, we're going to go up to St. Elmo, talk to the locals, see how the Tin Cup is, because a lot of the passes are a little bit rough, and because uh, all the rain are washed out and some of the roads are closed. So hopefully it'll be a nice clear day, it's supposed to be sunny, and uh, then we're going to head into Crested Butte from there. Camp just south of Buena Vista, and the plan was to go up and over Tin Cup Pass and into Crested View, talk to some of the locals, and uh, then we also talked to, we ran into some guys on some smaller enduro bikes, and they basically said that um, the road was worse than last year because of all the rain. It was really bad going down the backside. Uh, we were a little disappointed, but uh, seeing as how we're carrying about 650 pounds, um, we decided we would turn around. And uh, we took an alternate uh, route up over Monarch Pass and into Crested Butte. Dirt almost all day today and then again tomorrow. And uh, so it's turned out to be a great trip. Day 10, run to the Rockies, about 65, 70 miles northwest of Crested Butte. We're on a little two-track here, Gunnison National Forest. We stopped for lunch about 12 o'clock, probably about 80 degrees. Um, you know, it's cold as heck in the morning at the high elevation, but it's been warm the last few days uh, in the afternoon. And uh, we're at about 8,300 feet here. Tomorrow, we'll finish up in Wyoming, finish up the trail and start heading back. We followed the short section of two-track but not without incident. Passing by this huge rock in the road, I guess I forgot I had panniers on the bike and ran right into it. After picking up the bike, we continued. I think this is probably one of our favorite spots on the Shadow of the Rockies Trail, although it's only a couple miles. Towards the end, there's a pretty steep downhill that Stephen decided was a good place to test out his front brake. After passing through Craig and then spending the night in Meeker, we headed north again towards our destination and the end of the Shadow of the Rockies Trail in Bags, Wyoming. The first part of the drive is incredibly beautiful and follows a less traveled road with thicker gravel and rolling hills. It was on this section as I was leading up a hill that I got a little surprised. After my bear encounter, the roads leveled out and we had some fun at speed on the wide open countryside. During this portion of the ride, you're able to reflect on exactly why it is we do this run to the Rockies each year. And that's for Ultimate Sacrifice Association and to raise funds and awareness for our injured policemen, firemen, and military personnel. We are at the end of the trail for the Shadow of the Rockies and felt this is an appropriate place to stop. This is here at the Town of Bags Police Department, Bags, Wyoming. And uh, listen, this is the end. 
of the Shadow of the Rockies and we just got off our last section of dirt, but this is not the end of Run to the Rockies. We do this thing, we call the Skull and Bones competition. Every time you basically crash, you get a Skull and Bones. Uh, the rules are you have to be moving, it can't just be a tip over, uh, you know, where you lose your footing, stand still. Let's see if I can show you my bike, five Skull and Bones. So let's look at Steven's five Skull and Bones. We ended up tied this year. We didn't have anybody hurt in any of the uh, the accidents or anything, so um, it was all good. On our return trip to Texas, we stopped in Denver, spent the night, and then went on to Colorado Springs and spent the day there since Stephen had never been. While in Colorado Springs, we saw several things, including making a trip up Pikes Peak, where it was a little cold and wet. On returning to Texas, we attended the Cost of Freedom event to mark the end of Run to the Rockies at Freedom Power Sports of Hearst.